mengingat kembali bahwa kita semuanya berniat untuk mencari ilmu ya. Oke pada kesempatan belajar ini ya in this occasion we are very happy to have Dr. Sankari, she is a lecturer from University of Kuala Lumpur in the Institute of Medical and Health Sciences. And today she will deliver a presentation, a lecture about the hazard of Swiss management practice in Malaysia. Yeah, as you might know that uh, in the Malaysia is our close neighbor. Yeah, so uh, actually uh, we have a similarity. Yeah, bahasa Indonesia, bahasa Melayu, kita bisa bisa berbicara dengan lebih mudah. Nah, kesempatan untuk berkali itu sudah ada di Malaysia atau di Indonesia. So I hope that uh, by uh, presentation from Dr. Sabrina, you can learn a lot of best practice in Malaysia. If you uh, if you dare, we can challenge and uh, make a competition. Uh, if there's a possibility, you will work in Malaysia or yes. Malaysian people can come to Indonesia. Yeah. So this is the free trade era, right? So, uh, Dr. Sabrina, uh, I'd like to interview her. Uh, she is a senior lecturer in the Institute of Medical Health Science in Malaysia. Uh, basically, uh, her background is in chemical engineering, and uh, his PhD is from the University of New Zealand in yeah. Auckland. Oh, Auckland, Auckland in New Zealand. And her research topic is about the advanced oxidation process. And now he uh, see uh, have opportunity to uh, make a, a short research uh, collaboration with our department to analyze the PPA yeah, in the beauty portal. And uh, her expertise also on the environmental health and safety. Uh, including hazardous waste management. So I think uh, she will she have uh, uh, experience not only technically but also practically. So without further ado, please Dr. Sabrina, then it's yours. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Awan. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm glad to see all faces here. Uh, happy? Are you happy? Alhamdulillah, happy. Like uh, Dr. Awal said, that although the the weather is is very sleep, right? Uh, tapi kamu dapat uh, datang ke sini uh, untuk menghadiri a special lecture dari saya. Uh, saya cuba untuk berbahasa Melayu. Uh, Kalau tak faham, saya minta maaf. Uh, kalau kalau saya ada perkataan yang saya bisa untuk tukar kepada bahasa Indonesia, saya cuba. Ya, tapi uh, di dalam uh, presentation saya adalah dalam bahasa Inggeris uh, supaya universal, uh, mudah untuk kita berbicara uh, dan faham. Ya, okay. Uh, my lecture normally I prefer to have it. Uh, wait. To start with uh, a quote from I think any everyone in engineering or anyone in science uh, know him very well. Uh, he's. Uh, I said Newton. So his quote is A person who never made a mistake never tried anything new. Alright? So, this thing, kita cuba. Okay? Kadang-kadang, uh, kadang-kadang, uh, kesalahan yang kita lakukan, kita belajar. Alright? Okay. Alright. 
Thank you. This is the next. Uh, this is next. Okay, I think it's short, brief. Uh, just to introduce myself, uh, I'm speaking session with you guys. So uh, my name is uh, Technologist Dr. Sabrina Tarim. So di Malaysia, uh, di, di Malaysia, uh, kalau di Indonesia, engineer kita ada engineer. Eh, kalau saya belum dapat, saya punya IR engineer. Cuma ni, uh, saya adalah technologist under technology. So my education background basically, I'm a, a PhD holder in civil engineering. Uh, it's a bit uh, civil engineering in Auckland University of New Zealand. And uh, I did my in biotechnology and my bachelor in engine technology, industrial technology and the environment. So basically, uh, it's like by introduced by Dr. Awal, I have uh, industrial construction experience uh, for 10 years and for teaching experience, I've been teaching in UniKL for about uh, 16 years. Okay, so um, that's a little bit. Uh, I'm the auditor uh, of a panel for accreditation for engineering and also engineering technology and also a technologies program in Malaysia. Um, and also I'm a lead auditor for the environmental integrated management system uh, and uh, a computer person for the certified professional in schedule waste management and also the EI consultant and organic train, ergonomic trained person. So basically, my experience is all rounded from environmental to the environmental safety and health. So a bit introductions. Uh, the challenge in hazardous waste in Malaysia. Okay, ini terjadi uh, di Malaysia. Kami juga mempunyai masalah di mana terdapat illegal dumping. We have this illegal dumping of hazardous waste in Malaysia. All right. It's just that uh, it's, it is not because we have a law. I mean, we have a low quality of enforcement. However, sometimes uh, susah uh, untuk kita lakukan di uh, di seluruh. Saya, saya percaya di Indonesia juga sama. Di mana kilang-kilang uh, uh, ataupun industri they want to have a bigger revenue yeah so uh costing of uh, disposal of hazardous waste uh, is quite expensive in malaysia so it is expensive in malaysia because uh sometimes well for one for possible one ton it costs around uh dollar five million Rupiah. So they do it, you know, they bought, uh, they are going to buy illegal dumping, tanam di tepi sungai. And uh, this is what happened uh, in 2000, in year 2019, where we have an incident. Incidents where there is a toxic pollution, they buried it under the bridge of a, a river, what we call uh, Sungai Kikin. Okay, this is the area in Johor Bahru, which is um, uh, that area, Pasir Budang area, is an industrial uh, industrial area. Okay, uh, there's a lot of chemical uh, chemical industries over there, like Lotte chemicals, uh, other chemicals. Even in here, we have oil and gas uh, refineries also. So what they do is, okay, uh, here, read the chemical uh, dump at this bridge at Kota Masai, okay, uh, on, um, on 6th of March. And then, seperti mana, sungai akan mengalir dan memberi kesan kepada uh, dua sekolah di sini. Okay, there's two schools here. Uh, is is uh, the... Uh, sekolah rendah, uh, sekolah rendah, okay, uh, and also uh, sekolah menengah. I, I, I'm not sure. Ah, elemen. Ah, sekolah dasar dan sekolah sekolah uh, menengah. Yeah. So uh, these people have a toxification. Uh, terdapat ada uh, toxic yang menyebabkan pelajar-pelajar sesat nafas, pengsan. Uh, bukan seorang tetapi the whole schools. So, and also the people that living around this area also have that, um, that, have that the same uh, symptoms. 
Yeah. And also the third wave, that is the first wave happens here and second wave happens this side. The total victims is around 2009 uh, pupils. All right. And here also, kerana sekolah-sekolahnya berdekatan dengan sungai. Jadi, yang terkena, yang uh, terkena adalah di kawasan uh, Tanjung Put uh, dekat sekolah menengah. So, yang terkena adalah mangsanya adalah pelajar-pelajar. Uh, so, since this, okay, it is due to the improper knowledge of hazardous waste handling, trust meets lot of diseases and 2.43 tons of chemicals has been dumped in that area. All right. So this pollution is actually infected around 5,000 people, including hundreds of students and children. Yeah. So that is it too. Kita dapat lihat kerajaan Department of Environment of Malaysia. It knows that although they have regulations on the uh, on hazardous waste management, however, still. Still, there is illegal dumping. Kerana enforcementnya tidak sekuat. Kerana pekerja untuk enforcer dia adalah rendah. Jadi, dia tidak dapat untuk pergi ke kilang-kilang kecil. Uh, dan melihat uh, melihat kondisi pengurusan uh, hazardous waste mereka. Ya, yeah? So, di sini, mereka mula sedar dan melakukan peningkatan uh, peningkat penambahan uh, enforcement di mana sebelum ini menggunakan paper but now they go to paperless where they can actually monitor the movement of the uh, the, uh, the hazardous waste yeah so basically in uh, this is the latest statistic i don't have the uh, statistic on 2023 so what do i have here is that um you can see here uh every year up to two, uh, year 2020 a total of hazardous waste that been generated is around 7 million metric tons for the whole year of 2020. So if you can see trend here, there is an increased increment of hazardous waste. And I believe now it increased more than 7 million metric ton. Yeah. So this is actually the increase, oh yeah, as it mentioned just now. And the main categories that uh, we have, okay, in Malaysia, we call it as hazardous as scheduled waste. Later, I will explain to you why we call it as uh, scheduled waste. So the scheduled waste we generated is uh, mostly is dross, slag, or clinker, ash, and heavy metal sludge, and gimson. Yeah, so uh, power, plant, uh, power plant, they generate a lot of uh, the most generator or the most source of our ha uh, hazardous waste is from power plants. Yeah, so uh, it actually um, uh, produce around 2.5 million of metric uh, tons and then followed with the water treatment plant. Water treatment plants, because we have a lot of water treatment plants, they use a lot of chemicals. So we have around 1.1 uh, million metric tons and then chemical industries, followed by the chemical industry. Okay. All right, so uh, a bit of introduction on our Environmental Quality Act 1974. So this is the act that we have in Malaysia. So uh, then under the act, we have this Environmental Quality Act Schedule with Regulation 2005. All right, so to, in 2005, they just realized that they need to add one more uh, waste, which is electronic waste. Yeah, electronic waste to be included in the schedule waste, ataupun include as uh, uh, hazardous waste. Okay. So what is schedule waste? Basically, uh, in Malaysia, we call it everywhere in Malaysia. Kalau mungkin kamu dapat kerja di Malaysia, uh, mereka akan kata schedule waste. Itu tidak panggil dia hazardous waste. So schedule waste adalah apa-apa uh, sahaja chemicals and uh, that has 
the uh, characteristic of toxic and it is hazardous like pesticide okay i use pesticide so they categorize in the regulation as first schedule so that is what we call is as scheduled waste so basically these are the objective okay one is to ensure a proper management of scheduled waste okay the, Secondly, to prevent pollution of schedules in an environment and also to monitor the movement. Okay, because we know for hazardous waste treatment, we normally use the principle, I think everyone knows here. So what is the principle that we use for uh, handling hazardous waste? Anyone? Siapa yang tahu prinsip untuk handle hazardous waste? Uh, <laughs> okay, normally it's alright. <laughs> Mungkin uh, tidak ingat nanti bila exam baru ingat. <laughs> So maybe uh, it's a principle that we normally use. Uh, it's a cradle to go. Kan? Betul tak siapa yang ambil kelas Dr. Ani? It's not your class, okay. <laughs> Whoever class, okay. So it's a cradle to grave. So this is where uh, this law, this regulation, the objective what they do, this regulation is to monitor the movement. We want to know from, the, uh, from where are the source of generations, okay, then they transport it to the grave. Kita panggil grave lah, Mara, ataupun di perkuburannya mana kita mau letak, hapuskan uh, hazardous waste tersebut. Alright, so basically uh, there's a regulation. Okay, uh, I don't want to go one by one. It's too deep if I go to one by one. Alright, so, because this is Malaysia uh, management. Okay, so it's alright. Uh, so basically this regulation we have 17 regulations i mean under that regulation we have 17 regulations that's mentioned all right so satu nombor okay no selini yang berkenaan adalah uh, nombor regulation 3 di mana mereka perlu menghantar notifikasi okay of generation of schedule waste dan juga disposal of schedule waste yang itu adalah tanggungjawab uh, generator Kemudiannya yang lagi satu adalah Regulation 8, Responsible of the Waste Generator. And then Regulation 9, 10, 11, 12, this is where they ask you to follow how you're going to storage your scattered waste or hazardous waste, how you, ha how you level your waste and also how you have to provide information uh, by the waste generator, contractor, or the uh, prescribed premises. Prescribed premises di sini adalah uh, kerana agak sukar dalam bahasa aktanya. Prescribed premises adalah premis yang ditetapkan. Kami tetapkan premis yang di mana perlu dihantar. Ya, walaupun dia ada kontraktor kontraktornya, tetapi kontraktornya perlu mempunyai uh, lesen. Alright, so this is the principle. So, principle, I think it is generally used worldwide, credit to grave. Okay. Uh, sometimes now they change it to cradle to gradle. There is no grave. Yeah. Uh, change to cradle to gradle. Uh, nowadays, we are working towards to cradle to cradle. Okay. There is no grave where we regenerate back our waste. Ya, yeah. seperti contohnya adalah uh, minyak labrikan, uh, minyak pelinci. Ya, yeah. kalau kamu guna di ataupun minyak enjin di, di uh, untuk your engine oil, your um, motorcycles, you know, uh, cars. Okay, you use the uh, engine oil. So the engine oil is one of the hazardous waste. We characterize it as one of the scattered waste in Malaysia. Yeah, but uh, due to um, 
due to I think the cost of engine oil is quite expensive. So from the waste, they recycle it back to use to other engine. Okay, so you can use it in the machine engine. You can use it, uh, they can use the recycle uh, minya engine tersebut kepada jentera-jentera yang lebih besar. Yeah, so jadinya dia recycle. That is what we call as cradle to cradle principle. Uh, uh, cradle to cradle principle. So cradle to grief, it's actually have to go from uh, waste generator to the waste receiver. Okay, so this is uh, the basically res uh, three, three parties that are responsible of this waste. Okay, so untuk satu waste, kena tiga-tiga ini perlu jaga seperti dilahir, dari dilahirkan sehingga dikuburkan. Okay, waste generator here in Malaysia, mereka perlu hantar notifikasi. <laughs> Bermaksud kami kena bagi tahu kepada Department of Environment Malaysia yang kami ada uh, kami ada hasilkan satu waste, yeah. So dari you know, whatever chemical from the process, then you go mention it to them, and then uh, they have give the inventory berapa banyak balancenya atau diambil semula untuk kegunaan kembali perlu dicatatkan perlu ada inventory. Uh, submission to uh, consignment notes so uh, jika dia bergerak daripada generator to waste receiver kami ada consignment notes so note ini yang perlu di update uh, kepada department of environment malaysia okay and also uh, date um, permis and branch location information okay perlu diberitahu jika Terdapat bahan, bahan kimia yang digunakan, kami perlu beritahu. Itu dari segi kalau di, di sekolah, kalau di universiti, kami tidak uh, kita taklah uh, begitu baik. Tapi kalau di industri, setiap penukaran chemical perlu ada pemberitahuan kepada Department of uh, Environment Malaysia. Ya. Yeah. Kemudiannya uh, waste transporter untuk bawa ada uh, Perlu ada waste transporter juga mempunyai license. Okay, siapa pemandunya, siapa, apakah kenderaan yang digunakan perlu dilesenkan. Ya, yeah. so uh, segala-galanya perlu dilesenkan di sinilah uh, supaya kalau bahan kimia tersebut hilang, uh, mereka akan cari siapa orang yang berke, uh, berkenaan. Ya, yeah. so uh, selalunya kalau dross seperti dross. Um, kita panggil uh, dross aluminium, dross uh, agak mahal. So, uh, selalu berlaku kecurian kalau di industri. Yeah. So, uh, solder dross. So, semuanya um, selalu ada kecurian. Jadinya, transporter perlu berdaftar. Transporter, uh, supply driver and vehicles particular knowledge consignment note that pen transit only. So, yang ini perlu dilakukan oleh waste transporter. Kemudiannya, waste receiver dia menerima consignment notes dan daripada sini menerima dan dia perlu diberitahu kepada Department of Environment. Okay, so they have to validate uh, receive package of the disposal waste and also update the consignment note status to the end of the loop. Right, dia perlu bagi tahu benda itu sudah dikuburkan, dihapuskan, uh, di recycle ke, uh, perlu diberi tahu. Ya, yeah. okay. Ah, uh, yang ini seperti ya. Uh, ini adalah tanggungjawab di, di dalam regulation 8 tanggungjawab waste generator. Yang pastikan generations of waste schedule 2 Okay, you have to notify, uh, reduce them ataupun minimize the consumptions of the uh, waste uh, at the source. Okay, and then you have to reuse or recycle okay if possible you can recycle you can recycle it on site or off site on site di mana di dalam kilang okay off site di luar kilang tersebut okay and send waste for use ritual uh, 
reutilization and co-processing, render waste inoculus before disposal and dispose waste only at the approved facilities. Okay, that is the responsibility of waste generator. All right, so provide inventory of our scattered waste generated and also uh, provide information on each category waste of deliver to the contractor. Kena bagi tahu. Kami ada macam surat beranak. Yeah, so the chemicals yang uh, waste, okay, hazardous waste tersebut, kena ada surat, surat beranaknya, surat, surat daftar. Jadi, dia macam STS, seperti safety data sheet. Yeah, it's not checklist, it's just that uh, what are the compositions, uh, compositions of the waste, uh, how can we handle this waste, uh, dia punya hazard, hazard information uh, dan juga jika berlaku pertumpahan atau kemalangan apa perlu dilakukan uh, semuanya. Dan waste generator kalau waste ni sangat bahaya perlu ada hazmat team untuk bersihkan kawasan tersebut. Ya. Yeah. Alright. So ini adalah responsibility lah, store waste in appropriate containers, store waste containers in designated designed storage area. Storage area kami tidak boleh letak storage begitu saja, kami perlu ada storage area yang perlu didesainkan. Ya, yeah. uh, Dan also mark containers a proper label, labeling. Uh, and show all employees, okay, segal employees, pekerja-pekerja, karyawan yang menghandle, uh, yang handle the waste, okay, uh, need to be trained. Dan seorang perlu ada professional certificate. Dia ada set suam dipanggil. Uh, professional certificate to handle the schedule waste. Yeah, so seorangnya perlu ada uh, lesen, dia perlu dia ada lesen kan, perlu attend training, perlu hantar report dan didaftarkan. Yang itu adalah kepalanya. Ya, yeah. tetapi orang yang responsible tersebut perlu mengajar uh, atau train pekerja-pekerja uh, yang, yang lain. Yep, alright, so to ensure that all employees, okay, as, oh sorry. Establish the emergency response procedures in order to contain spillage, accident, discharge, and also provide technical expertise and supporting assistance in any cleanup operation. Yeah. Ada, ada yang uh, bawa chemicals, chemicals tumpah di kawasan, uh, kawasan uh, sungai untuk pengambilan air minum. Kami minumnya di Malaysia adalah surface water. So surface water uh, daripada sungai-sungai. So jika ada laluan. Sebelum saya hantar saya ke uh, ke tempat pelupusan juga, saya kena tahu jalan mana yang akan dilalui. Adakah jalan tersebut melalui air minum bawah tanah, spring water, ataupun ada tak melalui sungai untuk dijadikan air minum. Kalau boleh, kalau melalui sungai tersebut, kita suruh mereka elakkan daripada sungai itu, perlu jalan yang lain. Melalui jalan lain. Ya? Okay. Okay. Disebabkan um, sungai tragedi, sungai kim-kim tersebut, Okay, pihak berkuasa telah menukar daripada kertas, kami ada lima kopi kertas yang perlu dihantar uh, ke pihak berkuasa. Kini hanya menggunakan portal online mereka, Iswis. Ya, kali ini ini dalam masa sekarang saya rasa update lagi, tapi belum dikuat kuasa. Ini adalah bagi mereka memonitor, uh, how they, they monitor how uh, is Uh, our waste been treated, yeah. Okay, di sini semuanya ada di sini ya. Okay, notifikasi okay, yang disebutkan dalam regulation 3 kami. Every waste generated within 30 days of the date generations, uh, you have to every month. Kami adalah kami kan perlu update uh, waste we uh, waste we generate. On this system, we have to notify them, and then we have the inventory. We have to keep update the inventory every month, 
And also here we have okay, a uh, storage location. We can put uh, whether we reuse it or we uh, we can do a, a addition. We add in the inventory, and then they will have this summary inventory. Kami hanya boleh menyimpan hazardous waste ataupun chemical waste kami hanya 180 hari daripada tarikh di uh, di January uh, dihasilkan. Ya, yeah. so dan juga hanya boleh disimpan 20 metric ton untuk dalam masa 180 hari. Jika lebih salah yang mana datang dahulu, okay, dia uh, akan dilupuskan segera. Okay, untuk regulation 12, information to be provided by waste generator, inilah consignment notes. Jika kami mahu keluar, ada orang yang ambil uh, transportasinya, okay, perlu diambil di sini. Okay. Alright. Yang ini adalah contoh lah. Okay, contoh uh, secara kertas yang boleh dihilangkan ataupun boleh diduplicate. Ya, ini contoh. Dan ini adalah contoh yang baru. Maaf, uh, kecil. Saya tak perasan. Pasal dalam laptop, dalam komputernya agak besar tapi ini agak kecil. Uh, you can see that um, okay, buangan diterima berapa, uh, apakah residu, pengendaknya siapa, dan segala-galanya. All the information is in one uh, database. So it's easier for the enforcer to monitor each of uh, the industries. Yeah. Okay. There's four ways of uh, scheduled uh, waste identification. I will have. There is four ways, which is the first one at the source. Okay. So what are source of the waste generation uh, generated? Okay, di mana, uh, so, misalnya kalau uh, that waste is generated from the hospital dan kami kategoriskan sebagai infectious hazardous waste. Yeah? Dan type of process of activities, okay, the physical and chemical compositions and also is based on the safety data sheets of the raw materials. Okay. Uh, saya tidak tahu di, di, di Indonesia panggil CSDS atau MSDS atau SDS. Some MSDS, ya. Yeah. So, di Indonesia kami sudah jadi setidak SDS saja. So, uh, MSDS, ya. Yeah. Okay, ini adalah contoh. Contoh schedule waste, uh, schedule yang dinyatakan. Okay, dan uh, list of schedule waste is here. So, kami ada lima. SW1, SW2, S3, 4 dan 5. So, dia dikategorikan kepada um, uh, the SW1, metal and metal bearing waste. S2, SW2 adalah for waste pertaining principle inorganic. Okay, SW3, organic chemicals. SW4, for mixture or uh, inorganic and organic positive. And also SW5 is the other ways. Yeah. So basically we have 77 SW codes. Okay, so schedule waste is characterized as four, uh, which is ignitable or flammable, corrosive, toxic, and also reactive infections. All right. Okay. Tapi kalau toksiknya semua semuanya kita akan categorize as toxic, ya. Yeah? Okay, so saya masuk bahagian labeling and packaging and storage of schedule waste. Alright, so it is one of the important aspect in schedule waste management, or we we call hazardous waste management, is the labeling, is the packaging, and also storage ya yeah? okey ini packagingnya kalau tidak guna ini akan disaman akan dikena denda ya yeah? so um you have steel ataupun uh, plastic bang holder drum sorry so dia ada bang holder drum so this is for the uh, organic and inorganic liquid waste okay not to use for the uh, corrosive waste uh, for kalau steel 
Okay, kalau plastik boleh digunakan dan juga untuk uh, dieter eater uh, uh, chloroform uh, boleh digunakan untuk yang steel tapi tidak boleh digunakan untuk plastik kerana reactivity. Yeah. Open drums uh, normally we use for solid waste and also corrosive waste, acid or alcohol. Alright, so for steel, uh, we cannot use for corrosive waste, acid and alkaline. Okay, this one we call is intermediate uh, bulk storage. Okay, it is um, acid, uh, it can be used for acid, for alkaline, solvent and also oil. Okay. Uh, or uh, jerry can or carboy, okay. Uh, if steel cannot be used for uh, corrosive waste and plus cannot be used for dieter eater or chloroform, okay. And this is containers that specifically we use for the clinical waste, yeah. Uh, since sama aja, satu seluruh dunia sama aja saya rasa, okay. Menggunakan kala kuning. Okay, kalau menggunakan uh, dry solid waste, uh, boleh menggunakan kotak kartun, okay, uh, seperti e-waste. Okay, kalau ada ubat-ubatan yang sudah expired or obsolete and also cosmetic products, uh, cosmetic product yang obsolete or expired. Right? Uh, we also use jumbo bag. Okay, dry solid with no free-flowing liquids. Okay, uh, like bekas-bekas tat yang sudah kering ataupun garnet ya yeah. okay so for labeling okay normally in uh, in Malaysia we for the label we can't just label letak aja tanda amaran sign uh, we cannot do that we need to have warning the sign of warning the sign for identifications and also the characteristic yeah. So for sign of warning, we use this British standard. Uh, British standard, uh, the color, we can use color uh, blue, canary yellow. We can use signal red or light orange. Okay, this is color. And we have to make sure the, uh, the signage is 45 degree like this. All right. Okay, so perlu di, dia perlu begini. Itu signage, ada waste code-nya, ada waste name-nya, date generated, siapa pen, uh, generator and also address. Alright. Sama seperti ini. Alright. Bagi incompatible waste. Okay. Selalunya kemalangan atau uh, kemalangan berlaku, accident happen when we don't have knowledge. Especially in lab or in uh, university lab. It's happened to my lab where uh, we do spring cleaning. Yeah, uh, kita bersihkan siapa-siapa punya uh, chemicals uh, that uh, your reaction uh, when you do FYP, your final year project, we just dump in everything in one container. So it happens at one time after 24 hours that reaction. Tiba-tiba, the whole lab keluar asap. Yeah, so berasap is because of don't have that knowledge. Yeah, masa student kami enggak ada tahu ada knowledge uh, which is compatible, which is not compatible. And we just feel that, oh, it's only, it's only uh, acid and base. So acid base, you, you know, you add acid and base, it will, will be neutralized. But you don't know that some they has put the hydrogen peroxide or oxidizer that can actually activate the chemicals. Yeah. So incompatible with it's mentioned in four schedules in our in our uh, regulations or in our law. Okay. So uh, this is what they actually uh, meant. Uh, it is okay. The mixture of it will produce hazardous situation through heat generations. Yeah, you know, uh, the heat generations when the fires or explosions or the release of topic substances. Yeah, so they have this. I think I can't. I uh, I don't want to go that deep. All right. So they listed in our act. They list. You cannot put alkaline and also acid sludge together. 
All right. So you cannot have asbestos and solvents together. So because of this heat generation and this because of the uh, toxic substance when in case of fire or in case of any explosion. Okay. So 348B uh, on aluminium. Okay. We can't put this together. We can't store it together. All right. Uh, it can cause explosion of flammable hydrogen gas, all right, and so on. Okay, so that is uh, for on compatibility. So in order to manage our uh, containers, okay, normally kita perlukan ada containment seperti ini. Kita perlu ada alasnya. This is what we call containment in case kita nak letak juga berdekatan. Yeah, it is a simple uh, photos at faculty pergigian semalah. Alright, so di mana kita letak? Kita kena letak. Kalau it is not compatible, then we have to put a containment. Secondary containment. Alright, so okay, uh, and it's mentioned here that uh, this is what I get from the guidelines, okay? So the government also give us guidelines how to handle this, all right? And all the time, any SW container shall be closed. It need to be closed, okay? Unless there is process of adding more, uh, uh, more chemicals inside or removing it, okay? Waste filling shall be nearest uh, point to the waste generation, Okay, containers of schedule shall be robust and rigid. Okay, need to be robust, it's easy. So it's it not easy to leak out from the containers. All right. And at any time, adequate number of storage tank with the appropriate piping and pumping system shall be installed. Okay, we have to install this if we have a bulk amount. All right. So, perlu ada pumping lah. Kalau ada simpanan dan uh, uh, design of... Nanti kita lihat bagaimana mau design dia punya schedule waste. Alright, so special tanks like uh, span, oil and lubricant shall be provided design to allow settling and discharge of the water sludge. Right, and four drums or one bag per standard pallets. That is one pallet uh, only can have four drums or one jumbo bag. Okay, this is the rules, or else the transporter doesn't want to take the samples. Okay, it's happened to me, I can, I have to put another pallet, and it counts different. All right, uh, stacking, maximum two tiers. Okay, stacking a crate storage shall not be three tiers or more. Yeah, kalau stacking tidak boleh lebih kepada tiga tiers. Okay, or at any time, drum should start vertical. Okay. We should opening on the top. Okay, this is how the guidelines mentioned to us on packaging, labeling, and storage. Okay, so storage kami perlu ada, okay, perlu ada fans. Perlu dipagarkan. We have uh, fans, okay, and uh, storage place sheltered. It needs to be sheltered. Okay, perlu ada bumbung dan juga perlu ada ventilasinya untuk menarik keluar uh, the toxic substances. Yeah? Alright, so third one, it needs to have the emergency exit. Alright, exit here. And also, you need to have a separation area. Okay, di mana kalau it is not incompatible, so we have to do the separations. All right, so the fifth one, uh, where's the fifth one? Okay, the fifth one here, it means storage area surrounded with the concrete dike or other equivalent structure. Okay, they can perlu ada uh, concrete dike. Okay, they perlu berkonkrete. Dan juga kalau boleh, uh, dia punya lantai adalah impermeable. All right. So, uh, six jumbo bag contains schedule waste is placed on the pallet. All right, and uh, this is just the design. Lah. All right, four, four drums containing schedule waste is placed on the pallet in a row of two, two. Okay, so this is we have to have. And the main thing here is number nine, which is here and here number nine. 
it is what we call a perimeter drain. Okay, so the drain uh, then lead to the the punya sumpit. Okay, so the design we have to make sure it can contain hundred and ten percent. All right, hundred and ten percent meaning that the ten percent um dari uh, dari punya perbezaan daripada kalau drum tu boleh dua ratus lima puluh liter, uh, so dia perlu ada dua ratus tujuh puluh lima dia punya containment two hundred and seventy five something like that. Okay. Okay, ini contohnya tadi, okay, uh, penyimpanan. Okay, this is the bigger picture lah. Alright, that, that is in the small lab for uh, uh, temporary storage. Okay, so kalau perlu ada di atas pallet, okay, dan hanya dibenarkan up to three tiers. Okay, tidak boleh lebih pada tiga tiers. Alright, suitable equipment. Okay, this we need to ensure that uh, kalau letak atas pallet, it's easier for the forklift to lift the uh, lift the drums. Okay, the ample aisle space between group of containers to allow for free movement of uh, forklift. So the place must be uh, big enough for at least a uh, uh, forklift to go in and move around. Okay. And so on. This is normal. You cannot smoke uh, in the area. Okay, uh, must have this non-smoking signage area. All right, and reactive waste should be kept away from the moisture. Okay, so container to be transported. Okay, must be robust. Like I mentioned just now, the inventory record you need to be updated at any time. Okay. And waste generator shall provide information waste card. This is what I want to check out. You need to have like SDS or MSDS when you transport the waste. Okay? And then the okay, operational employees, you need to be trained a proper management schedule waste and need to certify. Lah. Okay, you need to have a license. And uh, all waste handlers should provide suitable PPE for carrying out their duties and emergency procedure should be established. All right. Okay. So this is an extra that if you, we can do, we can do. If you cannot, uh, then, but it is actually a best practice. All right. So uh, storage area inspections, we need to have a weekly basis. Uh, okay. Kita kena ada logbook. Uh, kena check kerja saya di kilang uh, di kilang perusahaan dulu-dulu uh, adalah setiap pagi perlu lihat apa yang ada ada tak binatang mati ada tak berkunci tak pintu tersebut uh, ada tak orang cuba masuk dan perlu ada inspection every day i have to tick because i'm working with a japanese uh, company so they are a bit strict about this yeah so have to run and do the checklist and uh semula okay um standard inspection checklist uh for the purpose regular inspection uh record keeping and shall be updated from time to time immediate action required if any problem detected during the inspection and so update inventory Okay, this is design. So the design we have to follow uh, like this, or we can have um, a simpler one, but there is something that there perlu ada. It must be locked, must be ventilated, and so on. Okay, so uh, this is the design, the site uh, elevations, the floor plans. Okay, you have the floor plans like this one. They need to have this emergency release valve sub if in case of emergency and so on. Okay, lantai perlu impermeable surface coating. Tidak perlu, tidak boleh ada retak, tidak boleh ada pecah. Must be in a good condition. Okay, this is example one of uh, my visit to when I did audit because uh, I do audit for environmental uh, compliances. So this is a good example that I can see. 
Okay, they have this uh, fire extinguisher here. Okay, we know that this area contains the hazardous waste that's flammable, okay, and have this uh, temporary storage waste area, they, uh, they are dimensioned here. And it's, if you can see here, it is padlocked, it's locked, and they have this mechanical ventilation, yeah? Okay, this is the sump pit, sump pit in case of emergency. All right. Ini yang bila dibuka lah. Bila dibuka, agak macam, okay. All right. This is another example. Okay, another example. It, oh, sorry. It must be roof, have roof, other ventilation. This is a normal uh, thing. Kalau kamu dari architecture, it's a normal ventilation lah without mechanical ventilation. All right. And uh, kita terkadang tunggu angin untuk ventilate it. All right. And they have a lot of signage here. Okay. The warning signage, uh, concrete, and then the other band. Okay, concrete floor with a concrete bun, 110 capacity uh, of bigger waste container and also must be fence or wall, all right? Okay. Saja, kita bagi gambar-gambar masalah. Apakah masalah di sini? Anyone? Is there any problem? Is there any problem here? Is it okay? Is it okay for you? Ada masalah enggak di di gambarnya? Di fotonya? Ada. Siapa boleh bantu saya? Masih boleh. Is there any? Bagus lah. Bagus ke keadaan ini? Bagi kami di Malaysia, keadaan ini tidak bisa. Kerana tadi saya dah mention that when you do storage, you need a pallet. Dia perlu disimpan di atas pallet. Uh, tahu ke pallet? Yeah. Yang bawah yang pakir seperti pak macam. Alright. So here, if you can see, there is no pallet. Yeah, there's no pallet around here. Yang ini dibiar buka saja dia punya open drum. Tidak dikunci. Yeah. And there is no signage on the drum. We need to have signage on the drum. Okay. Although they have signage here, but I don't know what is inside here. Ya, ikutnya. Tapi saya tidak tahu ini apa. Adakah ini uh, flammable? Adakah ini toxic? Adakah ini, uh, you know, can cause or acid? Ya. Okay. Uh, yang ini adalah the inspection yang dilakukan oleh Jatan Alam Sekeliling. Uh, we go one trip because... Uh, Perlu, perlu dilihat. Sekarang bila mereka sudah pakai baju begini, uh, kena berhati-hatilah mereka akan datang dan saman. Ya. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Yang ini yang di gambarnya. This is more of linker. What about this one? Aduh. Ah? Sorry. Totally. Uh, there's no, there's no room to make it. There's no building. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes. Is this totally wrong? Because they, they still have, you know, they, they, this is use oil filter. Yeah. But it need to have under the roof. You cannot just simply put it on the, uh, anywhere you want to put it. Yeah, they have pallets, but pallets are like rusak. Yeah, 
paletnya rusak. Okey, dibiarkan begitu saja. Ya. Yeah. For environmental auditor, we come and do, bukan untuk ISO uh, 14,000 saja. Di Malaysia kami ada environmental auditor to audit compliance to the law on behalf to the uh, enforcer. Ya. Yeah. Ini. Yang ini adalah lampu Kalimantan, uh, fluorescent lamp. Yeah. In Malaysia, fluorescent lamp is one of the hazardous waste also. We characterize as it is waste. But kalau di rumah saya, tiada apa-apa. Kalau saya buang, tiada apa-apa. Tapi kalau dibuang dalam bentuk industri, because in industry we use a lot of fluorescent light. So dalam ini, ia adalah salah, uh, ia adalah hazardous waste. Tetapi di sini, fluorescent waste bukan kodnya SW410 here. They just simply put without coding, uh, not in the right coding. Yeah. Yang ini, yang ini memang teruk betul lah. Dia biarkan terbuka. Dia tidak ditutup. No pallet yang dicampurkan. Ini tiada tanda SW berapa. Itu dah kesalahan-kesalahan lah kalau kami datang audit. Ya. Saya suka audit ni cari salah orang. <laughs> cari kalau audit uh, program uh, engineering pun saya suka juga audit dekat bahagian lab saya cari. Ya, uh, ini adalah benda-benda ni lah. Okay, okay. Do you have any questions? Is there any questions? Yes. Okay. Apa cak? Saya bagi semua orang dan kita ada satu sedikit sedikit dalam pertanyaan tadi yang menarik bahawa untuk pengangkutan dan bukti itu tidak boleh untuk melewati tadi sampai sebentar. Okay, ya. Itu kenapa pak? Okey, uh, dia tidak boleh tidak boleh melewati uh, surface water for drinking water, because in Malaysia uh, we drink water from the river water that uh, that are clean, so for water intake. Tetapi kalau di bahagian bawah daripada water intake boleh dilewati. Kalau untuk uh, melewati sungai untuk drinking water, tidak boleh. Perlu laluan lain. Kerana kami kuatiri kalau kalau berlaku kemalangan akan memberi uh, kesan kepada drinking water kami. Tetapi ada juga macam chemical, dia lalu juga. That is happen actually. Uh, there is one uh, lorries or trucks that bring essential oil. Okay, essential oil uh, that contains solvents. So when they pass by, and then it's accident, and then it goes into our river water for drinking water. So when it goes there, then uh, we the operator has to shut down uh, the treatment plant for about a week because of uh, because of that. So when it costs like that, it costs more money to clean up the uh, drinking water. So especially if you're living in Klang Valley, dengan kebat kepadatannya agak tinggi, ya. Yeah? Uh, jadi kalau airnya jadi seminggu sudah marah, uh, kami akan agak marah dan akan buat protes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, dan dari semua yang kemudian dijelaskan oleh Sumpah Sumpah Tadi kan banyak sekali tentang terkait apa uh, ketetapan-ketetapan itu Tetapi kesalahan ini tidak ditaati Sanksi apa sih yang akan dijabatkan dari Sumpah Oke, okay. uh, saya tak faham question <laughs> Can you help me to translate the questions? Dr. Ani Can you explain uh, the regulation, which is like a yeah, lot. Yeah. 
so he wants to know uh, the sanction. So the yeah. sanction, sanction, uh, the punishment. Oh, the punishment. punishment for those who are disobeying the. Ah, oh, okay. All right. So. So for the punishment, you mean for the fine? Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So <laughs> thank you, Dr. Ani. So uh, I did not mention here, but uh, in our uh, environmental quality act 1974, act 127. So in the uh, section 34B, it mentioned that if we fail to follow, okay, we fail to follow, uh, we 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 will be penalized for 500,000 ringgit uh, or imprisonment for six months or both maximum or both yeah so uh limit to three both times three thousand around two thousand rupees uh two thousand million uh five uh it's one point five billion rupees yeah 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 one point five billion rupees <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, uh, so uh, it's, it's a lot. But uh, we do, currently we are doing the amendment of the uh, fines also. So the fine will be more. Maybe 1 million ringgit Malaysia. That's what I heard from my friends. Uh, yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your questions. Any more questions? Jadi, mungkin bisa ini sama enggak? Berarti dengan yang di Indonesia kayak gimana? Ya, ini sama. Bahasa saya tidak tahu bagaimana yang di Indonesia punya praktis. Pertanyaan lagi? Mungkin ada yang berbeda dengan Indonesia. Atau sama saja dengan Ya, atau sama saja. Excuse me, uh, my name is Muhammad, and I want to ask something about what is the most hazardous waste in Malaysia. The quantity. The most hazardous. Waste. No, the quantity. Was forming. What is the one that will be needed? Oh, okay. Uh, my uh, the dominated is the SW. Uh, it's wait, wait one second. Uh, bentar ya. Let's. My first, second slide. A slide. Okay. So the dominated. The hazardous waste is the dross or slag, clicker, and ash. Okay, these are the dominated main categories of the waste that have been generated in year 2020. Yeah. So mostly is this one. It's still increasing or? Uh, this one is still increasing. So this is the total one. You can see uh, terlampau banyak lain ya di sini. Okay, di sini uh, kita tengok is increase from 2018 up to 2020. You can see is a drastic increase uh, from uh, just 2.02 million metric tons to uh, 7.1. So it's increasing and I believe currently it's increased more. Yeah. So, uh, dan ini yang, kebi, uh, yang warna lain warna biru, warna hijau, warna purple. The blue color is mentioned that how many percent that we uh, we we use it back for four R. And this one, I think, very small number uh, incinerate, and we try to reduce. You can see that there is a reduction in. Um, bury ataupun kita uh, hantar ke secure landfill. Thank you for your questions. Yes, Dr. Awal. Thank you, Dr. Sabrina. Uh, I learned a lot from your presentation.
So in Indonesia, actually uh, the sewage sludge or the sludge, I mean dry sludge cake, mm. is also categorized as uh, sludge. Uh, how about in Malaysia? And then how uh, can you share the experience in the domestic wastewater treatment? Domestic. Yeah. Itu kan menghasilkan lumpur ya. Nah, lumpurnya itu kan dikategorikan sebagai uh, limbah AB3 ya. Nah, kalau di Indonesia uh, seperti itu. Kalau di Malaysia bagaimana? Yang pertama. Yang kedua, uh, how about the community? Like, uh, like in your home or your community? Uh, because the battery is also categorized as a... Uh, Uh, hazardous waste, mm -hmm. and then can we share uh, the management about the uh, hazardous waste from the household? Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Awal. Okay, for the first uh, first questions, kauai limbahan ataupun our sewage water. Okay, so uh, from the process is actually uh, at the end of the day, the process this put it as the hazardous waste. But there is nowadays we do treatment for that. Uh, especially in our uh, uh, the company IWK in Malaysia in the water consortium, so they actually try to recycle it. Try now to 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 reduce the toxic level, and they going to apply for as a fertilizer. Yeah, fertilizer, but really is still in study. And now it, they still put it as the hazardous waste, uh, hazardous waste for treatment. I mean, uh, if if some company uh, try to make a uh, treatment of the sludge uh, in Indonesia, we should have a uh, pay from the Ministry yeah. of Environment. So every uh, no one can treat that. Uh, waste actually in this course study is okay, but after that they should have a permission yeah. from the national level. Yeah, exactly. It's the same. Yeah, it's the same uh, uh, in the national level also. Uh, that is why because our operators for air limbahan are for uh, sewage water is only for indoor water consortiums. So no other people can handle that. So only that they do a lot of research to actually reduce uh, to make that as a fertilizer yeah for the second question of the hour uh it's regarding what again i forgot um a household yes for household uh there is initiative from majlis perbandaran uh atau majlis bandaraya di mana kami boleh bawa pulang uh, bawa ke that mercury uh, ataupun mercury contain uh, bacteria to other uh, to, to the shopping complex uh, or there is a center that we can send and uh, nowadays they try to um, to have these uh, lorries come at a certain time so that uh, especially now uh, they try to I have like friends in uh, Majlis Bandaraya where uh, sekarang ni rokok vape. Yeah, other vape yang I think everyone, especially the teenagers, uh, students like to, uh, to have that vape. So uh, rokok elektronik, kalau tak boleh pun uh, sekarang mereka dah punya menyediakan untuk e-waste punya uh, container di kedai-kedai yang menjual vape to collect it back. It's just like uh, medicine, expired medicine. Uh, the government will ask us to bring the medicine to the pharmacy or to any clinics and uh, throw it there. Yeah, so that it, they can collect it. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Is there any questions? Ada lagi? Okay, kalau tiada lagi pertanyaan, uh, okay, saya ingin akhiri 
well, uh, my presentation with Abu Yahamka's uh, quotes. Uh, salah satu pergerilan terkejang dalam hidup adalah membiarkan fikiran yang cemerlang menjadi budak bagi tubuh yang malas dan mendahulukan istirahat sebelum lelah. Alright, with that, thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your nice uh, presentation and also uh, I believe really that all of us can get uh, a lot of insight from the Dr. Sabrina uh, presentation and if you still have any question, yeah, you can uh, send me a I will ready for something. <laughs> Saya ada. Uh, mungkin saya perlukan pasang presentation slide oh, saya okay. untuk introductionnya. Okay. Okay, saya tak dapat cari. Okay, so uh, universiti kami adalah Universiti Kuala Lumpur. Uh, untuk kampus saya, kampusnya adalah Kampus Institute of Medical Science and Health. So, uh, bagaimana saya pindah saya sebenarnya kita ada beberapa uh, kerja. Saya rasa kalau ada gambarnya lagi enak. Okay. Oh, it's okay. Thank you. Alright. So, kami ada beberapa uh, beberapa kampus. Kami ada 14 kampus di seluruh Malaysia. Dan uh, di kampus kami uh, lebih kepada program-program uh, on bio, uh, biomedical and sciences, more on laboratory. Dan program yang saya mengajar adalah ada dua program di program kami, iaitu program Bachelor in Environmental Health dan juga program uh, Bachelor in Occupational Safety and Health. Yeah. So, dua program ini adalah program di mana um, yang berkaitan dengan civil. Ya, yeah, Kami ada juga courses, uh, courses of uh, hydrology, water hydrology. Uh, ada juga courses berkenaan dengan waste management, water management uh, dan juga ada juga berkenaan dengan occupational safety and health. Di mana yang kita ketahui uh, di Malaysia juga occupational safety and health adalah program popular mana uh, kebanyakan industri dengan penguasaan yang tinggi uh, memerlukan pelajar-pelajar uh, daripada occupational safety and health. Di situ yang kami uh, fokus on. Ya, yeah. uh, di di kampus kami memang tiada program civil engineering uh, dan juga architecture. Tetapi for civil, because we are more specialised. Kita lebih kepada TVET, uh, lebih kepada hands on. For untuk civil, kita ada satu lagi option. 
Uh, so uh, option receiver adalah di bawah uh, Malaysia Institute of France uh, MFI. Okay, di sana ada program berkaitan dengan water. Uh, water management. So, uh, water management program ni istimewa. Uh, mungkin kita boleh berbincang ya. Uh, ada peluang-peluang untuk uh, exchange students uh, dan uh, kami punya MOA dengan uh, UEE di mana uh, mungkin kami kita boleh uh, pihak pengurusan boleh berbincang kalau boleh dilakukan credit transfer. Uh, uh, saya tak boleh nak janjikan apa sekarang tapi you are most welcome untuk uh, mengadakan aktiviti aktiviti bersama student kami dan saya akan perkenalkanlah dari pihak asal kita akan perkenalkan student yang mana kita boleh uh, exchange ya yeah. but i heard i heard it is uh, it is i don't know with the mo i heard with my deputy dean uh, just now she said that we can have exchange student for at least one semester uh, and i think it's it's free yeah, yeah. thank you very much dr sabina i think this is a big thing for us to uh, uh, extend uh, actually to italy uh, starting collaboration yes. and i hope in the in the near future we can extend our collaboration yeah and uh, as a token of appreciation we would like to give you some uh, support here. Uh, okay. We'll be delivered by uh, Dr. Adi. Dr. Adi, please. <laughs> okay. This uh, has a token of appreciation from our department to Dr. Joseph. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, and this is one of our uh, lecture products. Ah, it's like a product. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I realized it. Yeah. So, so good. Cool. Because uh, this is a rainy season. So, we <laughs> give you an uh, umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, terima kasih atas partisipasinya uh, dalam kuliah umum uh, pada Yeah, I hope